Hi, and welcome to Allen High School. We are an AP IBHL chemistry course studying structure and function for pure substances and mixtures that are dictated by bonding and intermolecular forces. Now, uh, we just finished up vapor pressure. Let's move on to two terms called cohesion and adhesion. Co means together. Adhesive tape is you're taping something one thing to another. That might help you there. All right. Uh, surface tension, these are two properties, surface tension and capillary action that are based on these twin concepts of cohesion and adhesion. Now, surface tension is based on this. A molecule that is inside can have forces of attraction in all directions. A molecule that is at the surface only has forces of attraction in one direction. So they tend to become stronger and it holds in or provides a surface. So an increase in cohesive attraction to each other on the surface of a liquid due to a limited number of molecules. Sorry, this picture got shifted. Okay, so um, that's the definition of surface tension, and you should memorize that definition. And it's because the attractive forces on the surface are a little stronger because they, they are attracted. There's a, not quite as many molecules, so they glom onto them a little harder. You can think of it that way. So as intermolecular forces increase, surface tension of a liquid also increases because we have an increase in cohesive properties, cohesion. Now, what might be interesting is if you take a penny, so that's one cent, and you put drops of water, and you guys know you'll have to remind me of this. If you put drops of water, the question is how many drops of water can you put on a penny? And it's a surprisingly high number of drops. So if somebody reminds me, we'll do that in class. And one of these days, we've got to sacrifice a gummy bear too. Okay, um, capillary action is about, is, is what is experienced with adhesive forces. So when molecules have a strong attraction for a surface relative to one another, they will adhere or stick to the glass and actually climb up the glass. So if the tubing has a small enough diameter, these attractive forces will cause water to move up in something called capillary action. And that's what draws water up into plants in the xylem is, is this capillary action is pulling the water up, you know, against gravity, against the direction that gravity would dictate that it, that it goes. Now, let's take a look at this meniscus here. We always, and that's because glassware is calibrated to be read at the bottom of the meniscus. And if our cohesive forces are greater than our adhesive forces, we're going to have a convex, and that's what we see with mercury. So mercury's cohesion, it, it wants to stick to itself more than the glass. So you'd actually, you actually see a, and they don't let us buy mercury thermometers or we would have seen it in a mercury thermometer. You'd have a convex. If cohesion is less than adhesion, you have a concave meniscus like this. And it's calibrated to be read at the bottom of that meniscus. If they're equal, I suppose in theory you have liquids that are pretty flat and don't really have a meniscus to speak of. It would be interesting to do a study of different liquids to see what their meniscus is life like and compare it to their forces of attraction because everything's about attractive forces in this unit. Now, just a refresher, kinetic molecular theory is talking about um, phase changes. It helps us understand phase changes and also non-ideal gas behavior. So if we're talking about a pure gas, we're talking about behavior that is impacted by intermolecular forces. That's why it fits in this seemingly weird chapter that I have pulled together. All right. If a gas behaves according to kinetic molecular theory, it's called an ideal gas. 
And when it's ideal, this mathematic equation does a great job of describing that gas. And that happens at high temperatures and low pressures. And this is key, weak, I shouldn't say few, I should say weak intermolecular forces. Gases tend to behave ideally, all right? Now, uh, there's a lot of different mathematical models that have been developed to try to describe non-ideal gases, and van der Waals is an introductory one that is quite common to use. This is considered a semi-empirical, semi-empirical. Uh, it's, it's a math equation it's, that is based on empirical data, empirical, I think I am here. Cool. I can't spell. Empirical. All right, so we've got PV is NRT, but this time we have an observed pressure that has to be corrected for based on intermolecular forces. And it is expected that you know this, that if you were given Van der Waals equation, you would know that that is the term that corrects for intermolecular forces. Now, often it goes hand in hand that if you have strong intermolecular forces, you also have to do a correction for molecular volume. It ceases to become negligible. So we have to correct it. The molecules don't have the full container volume to play around in anymore. Some of that volume is blocked by the molecules. So we lose some of that volume. And you should know that what that correction factor is. All right. So that's Van der Waals equation. And you could see it graphically, although I don't think, it, unless you saw these side by side, you would know this. That shows the uh, an ideal gas and a real gas is not going to quite follow that. You notice that at any given volume, it has a higher, there's a higher pressure than you would anticipate. Okay, what's common to do is to do this kind of a comparison to an ideal gas. If you graph PV over RT, if it was ideal, you would get the number one as this ratio. And these lines show how they deviate from ideal behavior. So even hydrogen deviates from ideal behavior as the pressure increases. And so you can see kind of negative deviations and to positive deviations and so forth. So um, look, do you notice that ammonia deviates far more than methane? Methane is non-polar molecule and so experiences only weak, especially relative to their size, only weak intermolecular forces. And ammonia is not only polar, but it has an H to an N, so it can hydrogen bond, which is very, very strong, and hence we see a much greater deviation from ideal behavior. All right, we're about to tie up this loose ends, a good thing because I'm about to lose my computer battery. Um, let me just point this out. Okay, we, I talked about those. I made another table that summarizes most of this discussion that we've had on structure and function. Between these two tables and some of the pictures, man, th there are so many answers to life's questions in these. Study, study, study this table. It would have been better if you'd put it together, you would have learned more, but still, it's of great value, even though I put it together for you. So, and it's because I love you that I do these things. So, until class time, this is signing off.